Hello and welcome to the program The Big Agenda. I am Messi Emelite and on today's program I will be having with me Honorable Preyi Influence Oseke, a member representing the Southern Age of Federal Constituency of Bayesa State. Honorable, welcome to the program and for the sake of the viewers, kindly introduce yourself please. Of course, I am Honorable Preyi Influence Good Luck Oseke. I represent uh, Southern Age of Federal Constituency. Um, from Bios State. Okay, now sir, you spent more than three years in the House of Representatives as the member representing Southern Ejo Federal Constituency. What would you consider as your best legacy during this period? Well, it's been a very uh, jolly experience. Uh, I've always had the uh, intention of uh, being in some platform in public service to uh, have the opportunity to reach out to my people by way of making a difference in what representation entails and so far so good i think that uh, uh, giving a, a new dimension to what representation is all about uh, looking at historical uh, uh, review of uh, what has been happening in my uh, federal constituency and my states uh, this was my major goal uh, one of the the, the the promises I made to my constituents while campaigning was that I will bridge the gap between those who were elected and those who cast their vote to elect uh, any uh, public uh, servant. In, the, in this particular case, a member representing them at the Federal House of Representatives. I surely have been able to achieve that. A clear difference has been made. I wouldn't want to be the one to start singing my, my praise, but from feedbacks, commentaries from our people within the state and within the Niger Delta, I've given a clear attestation that I've done my bit and uh, there is a new uh, direction as to what representation is all about in our uh, Niger Delta area, most especially Southern Niger in particular. Okay, so um, three years on and the 2023 election is fast approaching. Would you say your image at the house has positively impacted the lives of your people? I think that's, that's a very known fact. Uh, you are in the media, so I will uh, admonish you to uh, make your own uh, uh, some research or some uh, engagements with my people. I assuredly will be able to do some things that has never happened in the federal constituency. We've tried to ensure that uh, uh, projects that are captured within the zonal intervention projects, there have been, uh, these projects have been put on the ground for everyone to see. I started by way of uh, having a town hall meeting with our people leaders of communities, CDC chairman, paramount rulers, new presidents. We had some engagement to be able to give a direction as, as to what the people that I am representing expects of me. And after collating all of those uh, informations and data, it guided my actions as to the projects that are required. I've been able to put a lot of things on ground. I, I did some empowerment from empowerment to renovation of schools and uh, some level of uh, interventions that have never uh, been experienced within. Not, not forgetting the fact that within these three years we had almost one year and some months that were uh, periods of uh, lockdown by reason of the pandemic, the COVID-19 pandemic. But in the midst of all the numerous uh, challenges within the time, we're able to really, really uh, put some things on ground. As to uh, my participation within the House, it is evident uh, as Deputy Chairman of uh, Petroleum Resources Upstream, uh, I've always been very active in the activities of the committee, uh, even within the House, motions and bills that really, really relates to the needs of my people. I would have been able to push out there in the public domain. And I think 
our people are satisfied to the best of my knowledge. Of course, don't forget that in every platform in public service, you must have people who still want you to do much more. And uh, I'm not a politician that shies away from criticism because for me, criticism is one of the best ingredients in public service. You don't always expect that people should be singing your praise. When you do that, when you get too carried away with praise singers, it means that you forget uh, the direction to which you are headed to. So I have embraced every, every criticism that has come my way. It has helped me to get focus and be very more interested in the welfare of my constituents. That has been my driving force. Okay, so um, talking about these major sh um, challenges, we want to know what has been the major challenge your constituency has faced and you as a lawmaker in the House of Aslan? Well, uh, my constituency is a place where you have uh, uh, more like 95% of my constituency is a riverine terrain. And one of the basic needs, the fundamental need of my people is road infrastructure. We don't have it. And here in Parliament, the best you can do is to go about parliamentary intervention, given the, the budget tool. And I've tried the best I could, and I'm still going to push to ensure that some federal road is captured in my federal council so that our people can have access to, to driving to our communities. If a, a distance of three, four kilometers in my place, you spend thousands of nairas to get to it. Whereas if it is in a landlocked area where you have uh, motorable roads, uh, it will just take you 200 naira to get there. So it's a basic challenge, and I've had the opportunity of taking motions on the floor to see that road projects are captured in the federal budget. Uh, I'm yet to achieve all of it, but of course it's a work in progress. Uh, at the lower level, we, are, we, we try to see how, within the confines of our zonal intervention uh, project, uh, we try to get some internal uh, concrete roads uh, within the Ministry of uh, uh, Agri and uh, Rural uh, Development in our last uh, budget. Some short internal community link roads were done. And of course, when I came into office, I discovered that virtually all our schools, the infrastructure is at a very low level. Our students sit on the floor. They have no, some of the uh, school buildings as dilapidated as if the rain falls, if it rains, it means that there will be no school session. So what did I do? I tried as much as I can to see that some of this school infrastructure, both from primary and secondary, uh, were renovated. I also had uh, two new schools built, uh, one in uh, a classroom block and another uh, three classroom block. Of course, Education is a fundamental thing that drives any human uh, uh, endeavor. So I feel that if you educate a child properly, uh, you leave the rest for him. He will be able to get to any level he or she wishes to. And I've really looked at the basic needs of our people, which is first capacity development for people to be able to be a little bit entrepreneurial in our, our engagements in the committee of states because your people need to be creative people need to have uh, that knowledge that if they have some resource they should be able to do something and earn uh, a living so in my first year I, I i did a lot of entrepreneurial trainings then i capped it off by way of uh, doing an empowerment where over 800 and something persons in my federal constituency were given some degree of uh, starter packs and some funds to be able to uh, kickstart whatever endeavor that they think uh, they should be able to do. Moving from that empowerment, we now got into uh, the little internal uh, uh, road infrastructure and the renovation of schools. So 
uh, it's been it's been a very good experience and i think that continually i will keep engaging uh, the ministry of works and of course the leadership of the house using the uh, the, the budget too to see how some of the basic needs of our people can be captured Okay, sir. Now, since the announcement of the former governor of Bono uh, State, Kashim, Kashim, Kashim Shetima, as the vice presidential candidate to Bola Tinubu Ahmed, um, APC in Nigeria, there has been comments for and against the choice. Now, considering the situation on the country, do you see APC as a being party? Election. Of course, we are, we are a ruling party and the national, and as expected, we're going to work very hard. It's not going to be a walk on the park. Uh, it's going to be a very serious walk. Uh, our country is very divided now because of the level of uh, uh, insecurity, the activities of bandits and uh, terrorists uh, who have been going around, maiming and killing, sacking communities. Uh, it's the disagreeable situation is as bad as uh, the way it is, and it tends to give that um, uh, anxiety within the, uh, the Christian uh, community in our country, uh, because it is seen that uh, most of those who perpetrate these acts of banditry uh, are seen as people who are of the. Uh, Muslim uh, uh, Islamic uh, religion, or be that as it may. Uh, I think that uh, those who have anxiety, they may also have their, their reasons for having it. Uh, those who feel that Nigeria should move beyond uh, the issues of uh, religion, uh, they also have a very strong point. And I am also of that opinion that uh, we need to move out from uh, uh, the issues of uh, religion in, in leadership. I give you an example. I'm a member of the Ninth Assembly, and we've not, we have a speaker that is a Muslim and a deputy speaker that is a Muslim. But I can tell you, because of the, the quality of leadership these two presiding officers have uh, exhibited, uh, there is no, uh, we, we have not gotten a reason to think that the Christian, the Christian members in the Ninth Assembly are being undermined. That's to tell you that it's an example of what leadership can do, good leadership can do. And it, it erodes, takes, it takes off that fear of uh, uh, some thinking that a particular religion wants to dominate uh, the other uh, religion. I'm of also that school of thought that we should dwell on the leadership that will be given, given the challenges uh, we are faced with. It's not the first time. Historically, there have been uh, uh, cases in the past. You were, when the, we had the Awolo was the presidential uh, uh, aspirant, this presidential candidate of uh, UPN, he had uh, a Christian uh, running mate. Uh, the the very uh, significant uh, uh, June 12 elections that had uh, Abiola and uh, Babagana Kingibe it was also uh, a Muslim Muslim I think it, just even in recent uh, history Osho State supposedly has uh, more Muslim uh, population than uh, uh, the Christians but where yeah we are uh, the, we're Christian the governorship candidate of uh, the PDP is a Christian, the running mate is a Christian, and Muslims voted for uh, a Christian because they wanted uh, a change. So we Nigerians need to move beyond uh, religion because if you go to the market to purchase anything, you don't ask whether the person selling is a Muslim or a Christian. If you walk into a market and you want to buy a tomato or pepper or whatever, you don't ask the person selling if the person is wearing Agbada or is wearing uh, the Niger Delta um, Bola hat. We are Nigerians and I think that this ticket will also strengthen uh, the unity of Nigeria on religious uh, grounds. Again, don't forget the presidential uh, candidate of the APC 
if religion was has been a challenge to him. His wife is a pastor, and not just a pastor. Uh, she's a pastor in uh, in the north. You say a conservative Christian uh, church like uh, Redeem. Uh, so if the man at the helm of affairs, some of his children are Christians, uh, some of his uh, children are Muslim, and they are living very well. I also don't have an history when Kashim Shachima was governor of uh, uh, Borono State, that Christians were being persecuted in, uh, 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 in the north by the instrumentality of uh, government. Rather, uh, historically, it is evident that while he was governor, he, he used his position as governor to protect Christians. I understand when churches were even burned by the so-called uh, uh, Boko Haram, he went a step further by reconstructing some of these uh, uh, church buildings that were uh, supposedly destroyed by uh, the, the ones who call us infidel, whereas they are the ones that are perpetrating violence, using religion uh, as a basis. Again, uh, we are all living witnesses to the fact that some of these so-called terrorists, when they are arrested, some of them can't even recite the Quran. So, uh, how do you uh, relate a man, a terrorist, who cannot even recite the Quran, and you say he's a Muslim because he's fighting a, a, a phantom ideological uh, war, supposedly being uh, seen as a, a trend to Islamize uh, uh, Nigeria? I don't think that Islamizing the country is not uh, is, is an easy thing. The way we are looking at it. If you tell a Christian today that you want to Islamize, how do you, how do somebody from the desert go to my community in the river and say, friends, fault, you will not be going to church. You have to be uh, uh, nodding your head uh, uh, on the ground. How does that? Are you going to continuously stand there and be pointing a gun at me uh, to ensure that perpetually I should be? Uh, I don't. Think, for me, I am not. I do not see it as something that is uh, possible. I also don't see it as an agenda of uh, people in government as much as uh, there could be some sympathizers of some of these, those who feel uh, some sponsors of uh, the terrorism, they all they know what they are benefiting. I also don't forget the insecurity we have in this country has some international dimensions. We must understand it from that perspective. We shouldn't look at it from the point that uh, the, the, the insecurity challenge we have in this country is uh, uh, something that is born out of uh, some people in the north trying to achieve an objective. Don't forget, Nigeria has the highest black population in the whole of Africa. Nigeria has one of the most intelligent persons in the black race. Allowing Nigeria economy to grow Allowing Nigeria economy to blossom to the level and giving us political stability will mean that this country will at some point begin to compete uh, with the Western world. So, there are also the extended hands that feels that this country must be kept perpetually instable so that we remain a third world uh, uh, country. Otherwise, you can't have uh, the Iswa people focusing on uh, Nigeria building uh, camps for terrorism, encouraging banditry. We have seen on the social media how helicopters uh, shuttle uh, firearms into some forest and these men are harmed. And you want to say these persons are people who feel that Nigeria should not grow and these persons are Nigerians alone? No. It's not just Nigerians alone. From the fall of Gaddafi, we've always had within the sub-Saharan African region, there have been the proliferation of light and small arms. And countries like Nigeria that has a dense population and also a very striking uh, religious differences and uh, tribal, plenty, uh, plenty of uh, ethnic groups this is a, a breeding ground to encourage uh, terrorism and uh, that's what we are seeing unfortunately our security forces are overstretched uh, because the numbers are also not 
enough. Uh, we in Parliament believe that uh, the number of soldiers, the number of military personnel we have are not enough because you have a country of over 200 million people. What is our, 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 our military? What about the police? What's the number that we have? How many police is to one Nigeria? We don't have that kind of uh, security. For, don't forget that our economy is also not growing in tandem with population growth. If you have a population that is growing, in ast growing astronomically and your economy is at a very slow pace, even looking at the global uh, economic uh, uh, growth uh, downturn, you will see that necessarily there will be security challenges. Our universities are graduating. Young people, when they come out of school, jobs are not available for them to, uh, to be employed, to be gainfully employed. So what will this teeming mass of unemployed youths be involved in? We all know that they said an idle mind is a criminal, uh, uh, is, a dev is the devil's uh, workshop. And the likely uh, area such unemployed youths are tilting to is to look for extraneous means to make uh, a living. And that's what we are seeing in uh, everywhere. You have armed robbery cases increasing. We have uh, uh, cases of rape, cases of domestic violence, because the average Nigerian today is trashed psychologically, because even the one who has a job, uh, you, 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 the, the, your remuneration is not within the, the limits of what can carry the responsibilities uh, around even your immediate family. So. Uh, basically, I would say that uh, the Muslim Muslim ticket shouldn't agitate Nigerians. Uh, we have a very good electoral act that has given and power back to the people. We believe that Nigerians should vote for the, the choice that they feel is good for them. And uh, for us in the APC, we believe that we have put, put out a very good ticket and we are very sure that we are going to have victory come uh, 2023. Okay, sir. Um, two more questions before we round up. Talking about the insecurity challenge, we all know it's never been this bad. So, do you think this government has done well enough, or has done enough, looking at what happened um, at Skuji's prison? Do you think this government has done more than enough or enough regarding that in insecurity challenge? Well, uh, government business is when when it when it comes to uh, commenting on. Uh, uh, issues that relates to security. Uh, it's it's a bit is a complex uh, environment because you need to understand uh, the complexities uh, within the uh, the security uh, uh, situation. Don't forget, I did say I did talked about unemployment, the mass unemployed youth. I talked about uh, the international dimensions to the terrorism being experienced in uh, uh, Nigeria as to the impact of uh, uh, the, the proliferation of light and small arms because of the fall of uh, Gaddafi and of course the, the resurgence of uh, ISIS, uh, ISIS activities within uh, some of the Arab countries are now drifting to uh, Sub-Saharan Africa. Uh, as a government, uh, I, can, I can say that the government has done its bit. We in Parliament, we have our reservations because we feel that uh, at some point uh, we had several motions. If every day you come to city, uh, come for plenary, you see a motion on security. Uh, that's to show that uh, Parliament had our reservation to that extent. We even passed a resolution for the sacking of... Uh, the then uh, service uh, uh, chiefs, uh, that was done. And now we have a new set of uh, leaders in the military uh, hierarchy. And still, uh, we have uh, these challenges here and there. Uh, I can say the government is doing its bit, but uh, it's not good enough for us in parliament. We feel that the primary responsibility of government is uh, protection of lives and uh, the welfare and protection of lives and property. And government is failing in that. It means that you can't give that government all the credit that uh, it should. 
but uh, historically this government came when some local governments were under the control of uh, Boko Haram. Uh, the Boko Haram were completely dislodged. Uh, as we speak today, the, the, the activities of Boko Haram in the Northeast is being really minimized. Uh, we, we don't have issues of uh, suicide bombings here and there. Uh, we don't have issues of, uh, uh, at some point, I think even in the FCT here, the Federal Capital Territory, we had uh, some uh, uh, bombings that took place. All of that uh, has been able to, uh, uh, the government was able to work on it and uh, they got results. Now, don't forget that the dislodgement of uh, the Boko Haram within the Sambisa forest and some of the surrounding Lake Chad environment uh, is what has also encouraged uh, the banditry and terrorism we are experiencing because they don't have uh, the, the, the comfortable haven that they had within the, the northeast between uh, Borono uh, and Yobi. It is seen that the dislodgement has made them to come towards the northwest and uh, they are now resorting into uh, kidnapping, uh, banditry, more or less, uh, for, the, for economic gains. Uh, today they kidnap people, ask for ransom of 100 million, 200 million, they are paid. Uh, and that becomes uh, more like they are motivated by economic uh, reasons. So it's different from the ideological fight that we had where somebody wears a suicide vest, he comes to blow himself in a market. So for me, that's a bit of a, a, a progress. But generally, uh, the government has done its bit, but it's not something that Nigerians are very proud of. We think that the government still has uh, almost a year uh, to, to leave office. The government should be able to work very hard because we can't have a very credible elections in all over the country without uh, uh, proper uh, security. Uh, for us in Parliament, we we'll continue to talk to our constituents, no matter how bad the economy is. Crime, kidnapping, and banditry shouldn't be something that uh, should be the last uh, resort. Uh, government is doing its bit within the limits of the resources available. Don't forget that Nigeria is a big country. Economy cannot, the revenue that we have today cannot be able to handle all the needs of our people. That's why we need stability by way of security. We need political stability so that we can be able to attract uh, investment uh, to be able to build uh, uh, our economy. But if we have banditry, we have uh, terrorism, no investor wants to come into a country where his uh, investment is not safe. Uh, so we we'll continue to appeal to our people, our constituents, the defiant ones, the ones who are law-abiding, that give peace a chance. And let's see how we work and develop this country for good. And at this point, we'll come to the end of the program. Don't forget to follow us on all our social media platforms on Twitter, Facebook, 